You're listening to Morning by the Coast, a weekly podcast brought to you on a weekly basis every 7 a.m. So, with greetings, salutations, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Morning by the Coast, episode number two. Can you believe that? I've made it two episodes already. I feel like I've, I've achieved so much already. Um, same, same environment, same recording space I'm recording in my backyard. The, um, the conditions are a lot better, actually. I remember last week it was it was quite rainy and pretty pretty gloomy. Today it's it's windy and part and not partly cloudy. It's very cloudy actually, but there's no rain, which is which is a pretty good thing. Actually, we had a pretty pretty bad rainstorm um, this earlier this week. I think it was Sunday night, and it was it was pretty bad. Um, there are a couple of trees in my neighborhood that were knocked down due to the winds. Um, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, episode one was was a success, I'll consider it. Um, I heard from a few people uh, who said they enjoyed it. So shout out to, to anybody who watched episode one who's now listening to this episode. Appreciate it. Um, the topics I talked about, everything went fairly well. There were a couple things um, I, I would change. But f- for the most part, I'm happy with, with the results. Um, one thing, actually that uh, I know I promised uh, in the beginning that I'm now uh, reconsidering is uploading it on iTunes, well, uploading Morning About the Coast, that is. Um, As I have mentioned in the last episode, I'm not at all familiar with SoundCloud. I don't use it at all. I've never used it. Um, I downloaded it maybe a couple days before the podcast, and I registered an account, and I kind of looked around to get the general gist of things. But... um, I couldn't figure out how to upload it from mobile device onto onto the website. Uh, I know I could have just sent the MP3 file to my email and just imported it onto my computer and uploaded it from there, but I I wasn't I wasn't going to mess with it. Um, so for now, at least until uh, I get a new setup, episodes will be exclusive to YouTube. And if anything happens otherwise, whether I host also on YouTube or another. Um, website, whether it's Spotify or or iTunes or whatever it is, um, if I do decide to stream on any other uh, platforms, I will be sure to address that in the future. Um, and that's that's just something I wanted to get out get out of the way was um, with SoundCloud. Um, I know I don't really have a a basis to to build things from, so it it wasn't too too bad of a hindrance. Um, it wasn't like I, I had been uploading to SoundCloud for a while now and I had a, a stable viewership. It was just, this is something that I'm building from the ground up. So, I mean, the only way I can really go is, is upwards. Um, but I, I do appreciate the feedback from people that I heard from. A lot of people, as I mentioned, enjoyed the topics and what I discussed and just the general feel of the podcast, um, which is always a good thing to hear. Once again, thank you to the people who listened last week and who were listening again this week, or maybe even if they're not listening to it, thank you. Um, I got a lot of comments about the Wendy's dilemma, and I remember I mentioned last week that I had to cut things short, um, although this episode will probably be right around the same time length. But um, I wanted to talk more about it, but again, due to time restraints, I wasn't able to. So maybe if this is the first time you're listening to Morning by the Coast, if this is your first episode, um, and you don't feel like going back and watching the first episode and hearing the Wendy's Dilemma Part 1, um, basically. And uh, th- th- this is going to be a bit of um, of me re- re- reiterating for a second, um, but I'll introduce some, some new thoughts that I didn't mention last week. Uh, so I- I'm a big fast food person. I love fast food. I'm just going to admit it. I understand very fully that fast food is not good for you in any way, um, but I'm, I'm just a fast food person, I love fast food, I probably get fast food maybe once a week, um, within that, within that range, about once a week, maybe once every other week, sometimes twice a week, it depends, I don't know, I, but usually at least once every other week, um, but the issue that I was, that I've been having, now this is something I've been having for about two years or so, Um, if it wasn't obvious already, Wendy's is my favorite fast food chain. Um, 
everything about what they do, kind of how they run the business, the quality of their food, and just the variety of options you have when you walk into a Wendy's in regards to food and drink is exponential. Um, but something I've noticed about the quality of their food is it seems like it's been diminishing. And I don't know if this is something personal, if this is something due in part to my local Wendy's, or if this is just Wendy's as a corporation kind of lowering the quality. But it seems like the quality of their food has gone down. Their burgers, the chicken nuggets, the french fries. I mean, the soda is always amazing. I don't typically drink soda unless I'm out somewhere, but my local Wendy's has one of those fancy machines where you, you press all the buttons. I don't know if every Wendy's has this, so forgive me if, if they all do, but the Wendy's that I've been to, at least, where you can click on the button, say you want Coca-Cola. So you click on Coca-Cola, and then it gives you two more options of regular Coke, Diet Coke, and Coke Zero. And then you can click... Uh, just regular Coke, and it'll give you options from, like, Cherry Coke, I think there's a Vanilla Coke, I'm not a big Coke person, I'm more of a Pepsi guy, um, although I don't really drink Pepsi either, I'm, if you want to hear my, my opinion, my, my favorite soda is probably Sprite or Sierra Mist, actually, no, I don't like Sierra Mist, just Sprite, Sierra Mist is, like, the fake Sprite, but Sprite, uh, root beer, I used to be a big Mountain Dew fan, but I haven't had Mountain Dew in God knows how long, but Mountain Dew and Sprite are my two favorite. Um, I like Barks, and I, I like all root beer, actually. A&W, Barks. Um, I don't know what, what it's called, but it's the one with the uh, bulldog on it. <laughs> I don't know what the name of the company is. I just know their logo is a bulldog. That's all I know. Um, actually, I don't even remember the last time I had root beer from that brand um, or from the company, but it's it, they always make good root beer, and I've always enjoyed it. That was always like a childhood favorite. Was, was the the Bulldog Root Beer, as I called it. I didn't actually call it that. But um, back to what I was saying before. But they, they you, you just have an endless options of, of food and drink. They have chili, um, Baconator fries, salad. Just, a, just a, an abundance of options when you walk into a Wendy's. You don't have to worry about a shortage of, of anything. Because if you, if you name something, Wendy's most likely serves it. Um, Oh, well, obviously not everything. They don't serve pasta or pizza. Um, but I'm just, just Wendy's always lives up to expectations in regards to just the overall corporation as a whole, the Wendy's corporation, that is. And um, But my, my dilemma has, has been contradicting what I just said. The quality of the food is is below expectations. And I have... I have pretty low expectations for fast food to begin with. I mean, for certain places, I have higher expectations. Um, Wendy's, I have the highest expectations, and then Chipotle, and then McDonald's, and then Burger King. If you can believe I have higher expectations for McDonald's, that might be crazy for some people to hear. But it's true. I'll get into that later, though. My issue with, with Burger King, which I could talk for hours about that. Um, but it's just... I mean, I don't really know what else to say about it. I, I, I had Wendy's, let's see, I haven't had Wendy's within the past week or so. I think the last time I had Wendy's was maybe, probably the last week of October or, or the week before. I'm not exactly sure. I don't keep track of when I have Wendy's, but it, it, it's just, it's, it's disappointing because I care about Wendy's. I'm talking about it like Wendy's is my girlfriend, but I love Wendy's. It's a great fast food chain, and it kind of sucks seeing the quality of their food kind of diminish. And again, I don't know if this is something due in part to my local Wendy's or just the company, but I, I really want to see Wendy's step it up and kind of, because I feel like the expectation that they set within these past couple of years has really impressed people, and I feel like they have to do something else to really kick things kick things up or get the bar rolling or the ball rolling um they kind of pulled themselves from the ground a couple of years ago and they kind of impressed people and most people I talk to praise Wendy's but I feel like they need to to do something again to kind of really amp things up whether it's 
adding a new option on the menu or introducing breakfast or like a new ingredient with their fries like oh we're doing fries now with this oil and we're, we're eliminating all preservatives from our french fry and our french fry oil and we're going all organic for our french fries or something like that i don't know a new logo or or i don't think a new logo logo is really necessary i think actually they only introduced one maybe 10 years ago maybe actually probably a little bit less than that but they had like the traditional Wendy's logo of of Wendy herself and then the the lo- there were the uh the name and then the the slogan always fresh never frozen and now they have just like the the um the name Wendy's and it's kind of in that like swirly font I guess I'll call it that and um but I I feel like that's that's what Wendy's needs to do to kind of gain my my attention again is introducing a new uh aspect or just something that we have not seen before. Oops. Okay. My bad. I think I accidentally hit the button, but we're we're good now. We're back. Apologies for the technical difficulty. But I I I still will always go to Wendy's if I if you know, I where I live there's a lot of fast food places and a lot of chain restaurants that are only a, that's only a 5 minute drive or 10 minute drive. Uh, from from where I live, and if I want Wendy's or if I want Burger King or McDonald's or or Starbucks, or um, any chain restaurant, I can kind of go there. We have Papa John or not Papa John's, Papa Gino's, Domino's, and pretty much everything. It's a blessing and a curse. Um, but less about Wendy's, and I want to talk more about Burger King and kind of in McDonald's or just the big three to 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 say it. Or to put it, um, I I've always been a big um, kind of McDonald's hater. Not necessarily a hater. I don't have any ill feeling towards McDonald's, but um, I'm always kind of just grossed out by McDonald's. I think most people are, but they they have started to impress me. I'll say that. Um, I don't know what, but recently, their chicken nuggets. That that's usually the main thing I'll get. I. When I go to to Wendy's, I'll get a Baconator or or a burger, but I won't get a burger from from McDonald's or 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 uh, Burger King ever. Actually, maybe from Burger King, but definitely not from McDonald's. Just I'll pass. I, I like to have high quality burgers, or I know Wendy's isn't technically high quality, but the the quality of the beef. I I like to know what's in my burger, um, but McDonald's has been kind of setting a new standard for fat or not a new standard but they've been they've been changing the typical uh view of of mcdonald's as being kind of they're gross and schemy and and overrated corporation to now changing changing their motives and and really kind of uh promising things for for mcdonald's and kind of new expectations for people in the future. I know that they announced recently that by 2020, uh, like all their, all their burgers will be pure beef or like non frozen. It was, I, I wish I knew what exactly, uh, the article that I read was talking about. Um, actually when I edit this, I'll try if I remember to include an image of an art of the article that I read, uh, that discussed, the, um, the burgers from McDonald's and kind of their, uh, their new promise. But Burger King, I want to talk about Burger King. I have a bone to pick with Burger King. If anybody from Burger King is by chance, which probably won't happen, but if anybody from Burger King is hearing this, take notes. So, I like Burger King. I do. When I was a kid, Burger King was always my number one choice for fast food whenever it was like oh do you want what do you want for fast food and I I didn't I needed a whole lot of fast food when I was a kid it was very very rare that I would eat fast food but um when I was a kid I always loved Burger King there's always a Burger King uh where I used to live five minutes from my house like a five minute walk and uh my dad would always take me there like once a month or whatever or like maybe once every other week to kind of I don't know, take me out to eat, and then we would go out and do something. 
But it was always Burger King. It he never asked like, oh, you want to go anywhere besides Burger King? It was always like, nope, I want to go to Burger King. And um, but I, I now that I'm kind of grown up and I I I've had a lot of Burger King <laughs> and other fast food, I feel like I can really form an opinion about Burger King. I don't like anything from Burger King. I've said Burger King a lot. I'm not sponsored by Burger King. But I but I, I pretty much won't eat anything for Burger King. I, I just besides their french fries, um, I really don't like the quality. It's it's the quality. That's the big thing with Burger King with me. It, it's the quality of their food is is poor. It's I would argue it's worse than burger or worse than McDonald's. You heard it here, folks. Mc, or <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. McDonald's is better than Burger King in quality. But they're no, their French fries are are good. I'll admit that. Burger King probably has my favorite French fries out of the big three. But their burgers, their chicken nuggets. Anything, their chicken product and beef product is both poor. The only thing I will get from Burger King is chicken fries and normal French fries and onion rings. But besides that, that's that's pretty much all I will, all all I will have. Um, but as I said, I don't know. It just seems like seems like all these fast food places have been just diminishing in quality. Um, and that could just be my location. I I don't know. If anybody else has encountered similar situations um, in regards to lack of quality of uh, fast food. And I understand that it is fast food. It's not supposed to be um, high quality uh, to say it. But, I mean, it, it's supposed to be at least appetizing. And I know McDonald's is absolutely not appetizing. Wendy's is definitely appetizing. But, um... I don't know. That that's that's kind of the Wendy's dilemma and and really just the dilemma, the fast food dilemma. Maybe I'll call it that, the fast food and Wendy's dilemma. You've been listening to Morning by the Coast, a weekly podcast brought to you every Monday morning on a weekly basis at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to head over to my website, which is morningbythecoastblog.wordpress.com. Once again, this is morningbythecoastblog.wordpress.com. If you'd like to email me any questions, comments, any feedback, or just anything at all, feel free to email me at mbtcpodcast.info at gmail.com. Once again, that is mbtcpodcast.info.com. I want to make sure I get that right because last week I said the wrong podcast, or not the wrong podcast, the wrong email. So once again, I'm going to say it so it's clear, mbtcpodcast.info dot info at gmail.com if you'd like to and you don't feel like you're obligated to do so but feel free to head over to twitter uh, my twitter is at vegas marshall once again that is at vegas marshall um, you can find links to all of that on the website um, and i'll have that linked in the description down below thank you for choosing morning by the coast a weekly podcast every monday morning on a weekly basis at 7 a.m eastern standard time and let's get on with the show so since I started recording, the sky is starting to clear up. It is, I'm looking up and the clouds are kind of going away and the, and the uh, sun is coming out. It's getting, it's getting a lot more warmer. I had to take off my jacket, actually. Um, it's still a bit windy, but it's not that bad. Hopefully, um, the wind isn't picking up too bad on the, on the um, audio. Or on the re- Ooh, the voice crack. Or on the um, recording, on the mic, that is. But, um, again... I, I want to thank everybody who listened to the first episode. Um, I'll say this and I'll, I said this once and I'll say it again. Any feedback at all is, is so, so much appreciated, especially this early on in the podcast life cycle. It's good being able to hear from other people when I'm only, you know, two, se- two episodes in and um, where I'm at the point where I can kind of tailor fit things for, for everybody. Um, and again, I I would like to do this, so if anybody is listening to this and is interested in doing so, feel free to email me. Um, if you have any any comments or or 
stories or pictures or just feedback, just anything at all, um, I will be sure to include it on the podcast. Um, just feel free to email me. Uh, the podcast is Morning by the Coast Podcast. Nope, that is not the email. The email is mbtcpodcast at gmail. No, <laughs> I mess, I'm all over the place today. The, the email is mbtcpodcast.info at gmail.com. Um, just, just check the description. I'll have it linked in the description if you're listening to this on YouTube. Um, I'm, just, I'm all over the place today. It's been a long day. It's Friday though, which is which is good. It's always it's always great when it's Friday. Um, but uh, yeah, this this weather is is weird. I don't get it. It's it's now November third, as of recording this. Um, and it it's it's like seventy. That's crazy. Like, I remember last year around this time it was nowhere near seventy, um, and it's pretty funky seeing this bright blue sky with with his high temperatures i actually have an interesting story um a couple years ago we got hit by the nemo storm the uh, snowstorm that is in the northeast and um i remember i was at my house obviously and um just sitting indoors for a couple days i think it was snowing for a day maybe two days definitely at least a day I, two days kind of seems like a lot, but let's just say it was something for a day, um, and kind of just being cooped up inside, and even for a, for um, a day or two after, there was not really much uh, that we could do to <laughs> to leave our house. Um, I remember on the on the day when things kind of started clearing up, we were able to um, shovel our driveway, which was a nightmare. It was horrible trying to do that, and um, it took like two hours at least, um, but once things started to clear up, and once they cleared the streets, I mean, this was still, um, it was still advised not to drive on the roads, but they were, they were clear, but they were still icy, and there was still snow everywhere, but, um, I remember I, I, uh, my uncle and my little brother, we all walked to a, um, to the golf course that's near our neighborhood, and it's, if I were to walk from it today, right now, it would take me 10 minutes, 15 minutes to get there. But holy cow, when we walked there in the snowstorm, it took us an hour to get there, maybe. It, might, it was probably a little bit less. An hour seems like a lot. But it was about an hour. Um, and it was, it was pretty bad. We just brought our, um, our, um, our snowboards and, and uh, other snowmobile devices not an actual snowmobile although that would probably be really helpful in that situation but um we didn't bring any food or anything to drink or (laughs) which would have been smart to do so but it took us about 45 minutes to an hour to get there um with all the snow and just wind um and then once we finally got there it was really underwhelming um at this point all the snow was was pretty packed down but it still was not adequate uh, sledding snow. Um, we probably sledded, sledded, we sledded for about 20 minutes and then we're all kind of like, yeah, this, this sucks. Let's, let's go back home. And then we got home. It took us a lot quicker to get there cause we were going downhill when we were walking up there. It was pretty much all uphill. So on the way back, it was downhill. It probably took us maybe half the amount of time to get back. And whew, I was beat when I got back. I was just sapped of all energy, and I, I'm pretty sure I ended up taking a nap. But I was I was drained of energy. And um, but it, it was a, it was a good time. Um, another storm related story um, was when we had what was the storm called? Oh, I can't remember what it's called. I don't remember what the storm was called. Anyways, um, but there's a pretty bad, this wasn't a snowstorm, but it, it was it was just a tropical storm maybe. I, I can't remember. I, it hit like New York, uh, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, all of New England, um, maybe North Carolina, South Carolina, maybe possibly Georgia, but um, just pretty much the whole East Coast, mainly the Northeastern Coast. 
Um, but that, that was, that was fun. <laughs> Not really. But, um, I remember throughout the entirety of the entire storm, I remember sitting out on my front porch, um, just reading, just literally just reading and listening to the radio. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was kind of fun being able to sit down and kind of just, I experience it. I mean, like, it wasn't crazy. Like, I'm not, like, it was mainly just rain and wind, and it was, it was pretty bad. I mean, it was bad, it was bad, but it wasn't, like, unbearable. Like, obviously, I was sitting on my front porch reading and kind of not really too concerned with things, but it was pretty intense. I, I did see a, um, a tree fall down, which was awesome. Um, it didn't hurt anybody or, or knock down any lines, thankfully, but it was pretty crazy seeing that the, um, the tree fall down. Um, it was just like, I, I heard a snap of like a cracking, like, like a crack, 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 crack. I'm like, what is that? Crack, 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 crack. And I look up and this tree is like bending towards my neighbor's yard and it just snaps in half and just falls. And it was just crazy. It was crazy. But, um, I remember after the storm, similar, similar to the snowstorm, I, um, I went, with my uncle and my aunt and my little brother and we all walked around the, the neighborhood and just seeing the damage was crazy there's just trees everywhere there's some power lines in the middle of the road um here and there but um it was it's pretty insane seeing the damage done and i mean like l- luckily where we were we didn't get hit too hard i mean specifically my neighborhood um but if you kind of go to the coastline um which is about a mile or so from where i am they got hit bad. They got hit really bad. There, there, there was some damage to a lot of the houses there. A lot of the boats that were um, kind of parked, I guess. Um, well, most of the boats there actually, uh, well, they said like, hey, you should probably dock your boats or just remove them. Uh, there's a big snowstorm coming. This is about a week before the storm actually came. And I remember driving past the, uh, the beach and seeing all the boats kind of just not there um, in the... I don't know if it's a harbor, um, but at, at the, the yacht club where there's usually a lot of boats that are parked there, they were all gone, all of them. Um, but pretty much that entire land of water, which is, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I mean, it's not a land, which is kind of ironic, but that whole body of water where most of the boats are usually parked were empty, except for about 20 or 30 boats that were still left there or not 30, 10, 10 to 20, um, but those remaining boats that were kind of left there were all just on the, on the shore, or just completely destroyed, uh, which is really unfortunate, but I don't know what, what those people's circumstances were, why they couldn't get their boat out, or maybe they just didn't care, um, but it was pretty crazy seeing the, um, those boats kind of flipped over, or just completely dismantled, but we walked around our neighborhood and there wasn't any crazy damage, um, at least at first glance. Actually, right before we had the storm, um, wait, no, this is a winter storm. This is not the Nemo storm either. This is a completely different storm. Um, it is a winter storm, but one year we had so much rainfall, nope, so much snowfall just during the winter season. Um, and we had just gotten our floors redone uh, for, for before Christmas, this is, and, um, right after Christmas had come, um, this is maybe the first or second week of January, January, we got tons of snow, a lot of it, and whatever time went on, the snow melted, um, which (laughs) sounds, sounds like not that big of a deal until you hear that the aftermath and kind of what happened after, so, we noticed cracking in the wood, very minimal. I think I was the first person to notice it. I remember I was walking uh, to the couch, and I, I I feel like a like something, like a splinter kind of. And I'm like, what what is that? And I look down and there's it's kind of chipping a little bit, only a little bit. And I thought, oh whatever. And then about a week later, later it started chipping again, in the same spot, but even more. And over time, it just spread through the entire living room. And 
so we got the we got our floors initially done in December, and this is now February. The people came back in and redid all the floors uh, in the living room, and they had to tear down all the walls because what ha- what had happened was all the snow had melted and kind of wasn't able to properly exit through the gutters and kind of seeped through the roofing (laughs) into the wall and into the floors. So we had to redo the floors of both our upstairs living room and our downstairs living room. All of the walls in our living room and the entire roofing and just from February all the way until May, just my house was dismantled due to them just coming in and having to tear things up. And it wasn't easy either. Uh, they, they incurred a lot of major issues that kind of held it back for, for a couple of days or, or even in some instances. There was one thing that they, they found on the wall that they, it was maybe electrical or something, but they couldn't do anything about it. So they had to wait a couple of weeks uh, for, for an electrician to come in and look at it and kind of uh, give us an okay or, or fix what they had to do in order for the carpenters to come back in and fix the walls. But it was a long and costly process process that lasted many months. <laughs> and uh, If you live in the Northeast or, you li- or if you live anywhere where you get a lot of snow, just do yourself a favor and get a ladder or, or find somebody who, who has a lot of muscle or someone who's willing to get up high and just clean the snow off your roof. It'll, it'll save you in the long term. I mean, luckily we had, um, we had insurance or house insurance or I don't know what the heck it's called, but we had insurance and we were able to pay little to, to, uh, no money. Wait, no, no, we did have to pay money. My bad. I'm thinking of a different time. <laughs> It sounds like like I'm mixing up all these events, all these storms, and all these house uh, bills or uh, property damage. But um, no, this this situation of the floors, the ceiling, and the roof, we had to pay entirely out of pocket, um, and it was very very expensive. Those couple months, we had a big cut to to uh, to income, and it was pretty crappy. Just the whole situation sucked balls. But um, in the end, we ended up getting nice floors, nice nice roofing, and I guess just normal walls. And actually, after, cause so, what what my dad initially planned on doing was, um, redoing the floors and painting the whole house. And we just, with Christmas coming up, where we were cramped on time. So we were only really able to do, the the flooring. So my dad did the flooring. Actually. We we had finished the flooring and we weren't really supposed to have people walk on it, but we still had the Christmas party. Um, this ha- in no way impacted the the eventual chipping of the floor. Um, they just said like, if you are gonna have people over, just make sure that they're not wearing shoes or sneakers, or just any type of footwear besides maybe like slippers. Like, just make sure they're clean. Uh, you don't want dog fur on the floor, otherwise it'll like stick and just get all gross. Um, I mean, the floors were done and you could walk on them, but they're just saying be extra cautious for another month or so uh, for the 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 floors to really settle in and kind of comp- comp- compensate, compose. Yeah, compose. But um, so my dad had planned on redoing the floors and painting the whole house and redoing my downstairs living room um, that we eventually turned into a movie theater. Um but we got the floor done, and then we had to get the ceiling done. Or not the ceiling, get the um, the roof and the ceiling. Why do I keep saying the ceiling? The roof, the floors, and the walls. Um, not not of the whole house, just the walls and the floors in the, liv- in the living room. But we had to do the whole roof. Every, all, all the tile on our roof is pretty much brand new. Um, and then finally, come summertime, they decided to finally... Uh, do the whole downstairs, paint the outside of the house, um, install the movie theater, do, just do everything. All, <laughs> all of them this year. And, and that year was stressful as heck. I pretty much was stuck sleeping in on a mattress in my living room because just 
of the whole house is being redone. But now, now everything is really nice, brand new, new paint, new floors, or the same floor, just repainted. We have a nice movie theater um, and a nice game room too. So it ended up paying off in the long term. And we recently actually just got solar panels uh, installed, which we had planned on getting installed around the time where we had all the um, renovations done. But just due to co- due to cost and time, we just weren't able to, and we kind of had to put it on hold. And finally, uh, we met with the the solar people uh, over the summer, and then. A, couple weeks ago a month ago a couple weeks or a month ago they um they finally installed them which is which is awesome uh we were the first we were the first people in our neighborhood to have solar panels installed which is always a cool thing we're like the pioneers i guess but um i mean that's kind of a long story that i that branch from two other longer stories. So the final topic for today, and this is, this is probably going to be a shorter episode. It'll probably be between 40 and 50 minutes, but, um, I wanted to talk about Star Wars and with the new Last Jedi film coming out in a couple weeks, I feel like it's relevant to talk about it. And I'll probably talk about it again once it gets closer to the actual, um, episode, or episode, well, yeah, it is episode, episode eight, I hope that's right, otherwise I'm gonna feel like an idiot, 